Hello, Jenny here, Waxing Sewing Studio, here to help you uh, or reassure you if you've done this before um, about how to use the stay tape in your fielder kit and then how to uh, get that stay tape onto your shoulder and then sew a really nice shoulder dart. So let's get started. So you'll notice when you cut your pattern pieces that your sleeves are asymmetrical. So the back is longer than the front of the, of, of the um, sleeve up here. Um, you can always tell too, because by convention, our two notches are uh, denoting the back uh, um, sleeve arm sky. And then, uh, but you can also tell by just looking at the picture in the, in the instructions. So what we're gonna do is we're going to find our back and then we're going to find our stay tape. And the stay tape is really cool because it's very, very, light and delicate, um, and we use it because it gives a little bit of added stability to this part of the shoulder so it doesn't um, bunch up over time or like kind of um, get wavy. And But it also is so light that it doesn't change the hand or the drape of the fabric, which we really want on the shoulder stream seam. Now the downside of this is that it's hard to tell which side is which. So the, the side that faces up is gonna be pretty smooth and the side that faces down that you're going to fuse or glue onto the fabric is gonna have slightly more texture to it. So you can usually feel it with your thumb. So find, your, find the side that's a little more gluey. And then what we're going to do is we're going to lay it out starting at these two notches. There's a notch here and a notch here under our triangle. Start about there and then bring your seam tape down to your shoulder notch, your first one, which is right here. Here's my other shoulder notch. All right, so I've got that in the right spot. And I'm gonna just cut it off right after that notch because that's all we need for a little bit of extra stability here. And when I go to iron this, you wanna use a press cloth. Um, if you have squares of silk organza that you use as a press cloth at home, that's perfect. That's what I usually use. But also, if you don't have that or you don't wanna interface with your press cloth, um, then you can use the tissue, the acid-free tissue that's in your kit in order to do this as well. And it's slightly see-through, which is super convenient. So I'm putting my press cloth down on my tissue paper. I'm grabbing my iron. My iron is set at a medium medium high setting. I've tested it before this to make sure that my iron isn't set so high that it's gonna make my linen shine. Sometimes my irons say that linen's like way over here at max, but not this, not this, this is very lightweight dress weight fabric. So we wanna make sure that we've tested and we're not gonna burn our fabric. So to fuse, you wanna press directly down without moving around. You wanna give it lots of steam and you wanna hold for about 15 seconds, as much as 20 seconds. So I always have this like great urge to like move the iron around a whole bunch, but that can actually pull your fabric out of grain sometimes while you're fusing and you don't want that to happen. So you just wanna stay still for a few seconds. And I like to do a little bit of an overlap. And this is looking great. Checked and looks like it's nicely fused. If you happen to have uh, glued it to your press cloth or your um, or your tissue paper, that's fine. You'll have some extra in here because that's something that certainly I've done lots of times. So I left some extra in there. So no worries. So once you have a fused stay stitch strip right here, we're gonna go ahead and think about how we get this nicely curved shoulder, uh, shoulder seam sewn. So your shoulder dart. So one thing that can be helpful is you wanna think first about which side you're gonna actually have the, like your sewing machine sewing on. So you can mark that side a little bit more if you want to. So on this side, we're going to be looking with the um, backside face up. And that's just because, you know, that's where our sewing machine's gonna be and we're gonna go vroom. So, and then on the other sleeve, you'll know you're doing the right thing because you'll be looking at the other side um, face up because you wanna make, uh, you know, two mirror images of each other. So as I lay this out, Actually, the first thing I wanna do, now that I know which side I'm going to be sewing on, I'm going to draw a line 
with my marking tool. I have this big pen that I use that you can erase. Um, it has an eraser pen as well. That one's great. But you know, honestly, a lot of times I just use a ballpoint pen. <laughs> that's worked out just fine. Um, if that's all you've got around, or you can use chalk if you have a chalk's always the best if you have a color that will show up on the fabric color that you're using. So this is a curve. So I want to keep that in mind. And I'm going to just connect these two, my center point and my edge, and then my um, my midpoint and the notch that's covered with the stay tape. And then we have a good approximation of our curve and we know where we're going to sew now. So now that we have that, we're going to drape the fabric so our notches are nicely aligned and we're not pulling anything out of grain. So up here in this triangle, we have a notch here and we have a notch here. So I want to pin that. And then I want to let it kind of drape where it's going to go. You know, we're taking this two dimensional thing and making it three dimensional. So make sure you give an opportunity to kind of fall, fall into place. This is looking nice. Let me put another pin around here. And then down here, so up until here, we've also been matching up the edge of our seam allowance here. So down here, I go and I find my center and I finger press it. And then this is gonna be right along the grain line between the edge here and your center point. So I wanna actually look at my grain line here. Gently press down with my fingers. Don't want to go nuts with the iron. This is very delicate because it's such a small allowance here. And then I will pin at this mark and at this mark. All right, so let's go over to our sewing machine and we'll get this sewn. All right, so I'm at my machine, and the first thing I want to do when I get over here is kind of, you know, re-allow everything to like loosely drape into the right place and then check my notches one more time, make sure that they're in good shape. So when I'm looking at the back here, if you kind of like press through here, you can kind of see how this is going to drape when it's done, done correctly. So just using my regular foot right now, uh, the standard foot that comes with all the machines. If you have a walking foot, that's great. That's a good one to use too, or a quarter inch foot is great too. We are working with a one centimeter seam allowance and that's three eighths inch. If you're, uh, if you're you know, looking at, at inches instead of centimeters. So I'm gonna get that lined up right along the notch. Use that notch as a guide. Um, we rate it three eighths there. Just a little bit over. Okay. All right. So I'm nicely lined up. I'm going to drop my needle. And so I don't end up eating the edge here and having it get stuck in my sewing machine, which happens sometimes with these little seams. Um, I'm going to drop and then I'm going to go forward. Two, one, two. I'm going to go back. And now I'm going to go forward. And I'm holding the fabric. So it kind of does what it's going to do when it's on the body, right? So I'm lifting up both the, both the sides here gently. So the right parts of the fabric are going to come together at the edge here. And I'm right at my 3 eighths inch or 1 centimeter seam allowance. Watching for bubbles. If you're, if you're feeling like the tension's starting to get a little weird, just lift your sewing machine foot a little bit as you go around curves and it can release some tension. Go around. So I'm gonna catch up with my mark for the dart here. And then I'm gonna start having less than a 3 inch seam allowance as I move down slowly 
and this dart eventually goes down to zero at that center point down at the bottom. So I'm gonna watch my line very carefully, get a sense of where my dart is, release some tension here. We're still going in a curve, right? It's just a very gentle curve. You probably can't see the dot, but I'm gonna to get to the dot. I'm gonna go until I'm my sewing machine is my needle is one past that um, that edge there, and then I'm going to lift my needle and pull, give myself some extra, and I'm gonna tie this off manually. So I'm gonna check and make sure I didn't create any wibbly wobbliness that is unneeded. It's looking looking really nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie it off. By I just you know double knot the end here is plenty. And you can snip this. And when you go to your iron and iron this down, you're gonna iron it down toward the back sleeve, and this is gonna line up really nicely right here. And you can use a tailor's ham to get that gentle shape there. Because what you don't want to do, if you don't have a tailor's hand, I'd actually just finger press it. I wouldn't even take it to the iron. But if you do have a tailor's hand, which I'll grab mine so you can see. This is a tailor's hand. You can actually drape your new shoulder seam right over the edge of that tailor's hand. And then you can very, very gently get that seam allowance toward the back without creating any new puckering or anything because this is a delicate seam. So go over, you can do that ironing. But one more thing I want to show you while we're here is I want to show you how to finish this seam. So if you have a serger or an overlock, then you can just overlock this, this raw edge of the seam if you want. But if you don't, then you can just move to a zigzag stitch and you can zigzag the very edge of this. And I like to have a width of two and a half and a length of two and a half. So just nice kind of squared off little zigzag is going to do just fine for you to get this and any other seams uh, finished. And I'll show you what that zigzag looks like when we do the ribbing. So thank you so much and I'll see you for the ribbing in just a minute.